Hi, Papa Glob here. I built this version of the Razorcrest. Uh, I call it UCS because it's quite big. It's more than five kilos. Uh, it's actually the second one uh, I did. I did a, a first one back in April when the first images of the um, Razorcrest were shown during uh, Star Wars Celebration. Uh, so the first version I did only based on what I had, uh, the, the footage I had at that time. And there was no interior and it was a little bit smaller than this one. I worked on it uh, until July and, uh, and it's here, just behind me, the remnant of it, as if the Jawas got to it. Because um, I had to repurpose some of the pieces and use them for the, for the new one. So yes, it was the first time I was doing instructions. Of course, it's not my first mock. I've been doing uh, Star Wars mocks for about six or seven years now. I have a cantina that is pretty big and, and super detailed. I have my carbonic chamber here that is pretty close to what's on screen. Uh, I did my own Ewing as well, because uh, the one, uh, the official one was a little bit too small. And there's another one that is very famous that is huge but it's a little bit too big and the interior is not as detailed as I like it to be. So this one has the fully detailed interior. Um, and I'm doing also little, little mocks and, and minifigs and things like that. I'm a Lego fan and a Star Wars fan, as you can notice. When the first episode aired, I realized that there were a lot of details uh, in the inside and that my previous version was too small to have uh, all of that in it. Uh, the bed and uh, the vac tube and, uh, and everything. Uh, it, it needed to be to be bigger and I really felt that a 20% increase of everything uh, would allow me to do really something better. Uh, I already had the, um, the reactors like that, the engines that, was, that were that big and I wanted the rest to be at the same scale. I wanted it to remain in the minifig scale range so that's why I didn't go with something really crazy. So to me this is minifig scale even if it's maybe at the high range of minifig scale. I also have that little blurg here uh, that I made. So these are the legs from the Luger Beast from episode seven that I reused. And fun fact about this one, uh, uh, there's a famous builder that I'm following on Flickr called uh, L'Etranger Absurde. And he did uh, one that is splendid, uh, a little bit bigger than this one. And it's uh, light bluish gray. And in, in the comments, he was saying, oh, it's too bad, you can't do that in, in dark tan. So I was like, okay, I need to do that in dark tan. So that's why I did this one. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool. It's, um, it, it, it requires more, uh, more work. And another reason why I did this one is when people were asking me about the size of this, and there were some of them were saying, oh, it's too big, it's, it's not really minifig scale. And I was like, mm -hmm. how do you think you can fit three of those in a smaller one? And even uh, at, at that scale, uh, you can put only two in it and not three. So, so far the review have been really, uh, really cool uh, uh, about this build. I'm really proud of, uh, of it and I'm really uh, touched by all the good words I'm, I'm receiving on all um, social media. I even received um, some f congratulations from one of the ac actual actors uh, of the show. Uh, the actor who was playing Zero in episode 6. Uh, he posted on Instagram telling me, hey, I've been inside this ship and it really looks like that. And I also uh, asked him what he thought about the cockpit because at some point Zero is um, piloting it and he really was uh, positive that it was really like uh, in the show. So that's maybe the best uh, thing you can hear about a, a build like that. Uh, that along with, uh, it doesn't even look like Lego. In November, when I saw the first episodes, I really started to look closely to every scene where the ship was in. Uh, and, and grab all the details and look at the episode over and over again to make sure I was not missing everything. Um, maybe you don't know, but there are two ladders into it. One, the first one at the, the front that leads to the cockpit, but there's another one at the rear and I don't know where it leads and it is uh, driving me crazy because that's the only part of the ship that I don't know. So that's maybe the, the dark spot, the last dark, dark spot I have. Otherwise, I have a pretty good knowledge of what's inside of this. Uh, and episode after episode, thanks to the fact that it's modular, I was really able to, to improve it and add some more details and little hints. I have the, the armory and I have the, the bedroom and the carbonate machine. Fun fact, that carbonate thing, when you look only at episode one, you could think it's on this side of the, of the ship, 
but it turns out it's on the other side because you, you, re you realize that after. So all that kind of little details I really worked on and a lot of people were asking me for the instructions for that. But I was a little bit uh, scared of starting that project because for a build that big, uh, I had no idea how long it would take. Uh, it was really a big, uh, big thing to do and I never did uh, instructions before. Uh, for the first one, I was positive I would not do the instructions because I knew that I, the second one would be better. And then, out of the blue, a guy named James uh, contacted me uh, from, the, from the West Coast. And uh, I was like, oh, I've seen your photos and uh, this build is great. You really need to do the instruction. Let me help you do it. I was like, ah, it's not going to be difficult. You know, we're like 6,000 kilometers apart. And, and he told me, look at that. Uh, based on only the photos you have on Facebook, I did that first, uh, that first try. And what he sent me was crazy. It was seeing my own work in the digital version. So I said, okay, let's do this. So I took maybe two or 300 photos and videos of, uh, of this build uh, in, in a couple of days, really uh, on every angle and send, send them to him. And he really helped me a lot with that. Uh, he did all the, the, the groundwork uh, to, to, to make that real module after module. And we were sending the files back and forth to, to make sure everything was okay. Uh, it took us the whole month of January uh, of this year to do that. Uh, and I'm really grateful because without him, I wouldn't have even tried to, to, to do all, all that amount of work. And I learned a lot about how um, studio uh, works now. I feel more com comfortable now um, working on that. And uh, I'm also planning to do um, a little, not really a new version, but an improved one. Because um, I received some feedback that some of the pieces in this build are pretty rare. And part of it, it's something that you can't avoid. Like for instance, these ones, uh, there are a limited number of those in the world. It uh, was only in one set from a couple of years ago, a Ninja Turtle set. And, and these ones too, for the, for the cockpit here, uh, these are pretty vintage from uh, the 90s. Uh, so that's the only part that really can't be changed for something else. But a lot of other pieces uh, in there could, could be changed. It's something that when I was uh, doing it with James on studio, uh, you, you see that kind of piece, you, you put it in the build and you don't really realize that there are two different versions of it. Uh, one that is pretty common and that you can get for a couple of cents and the other one, that is pretty much the same, but a little bit different, and it's 10 times the price. There are a couple of these in the current build like that, uh, and some people uh, g give me feedback about that, and I decided to maybe do, uh, not maybe, but I'm, I'm working right now on a new version, and that version uh, uh, fixes most of that. Uh, and when a piece is not really visible or not really useful, I'm going to replace it by something that is more e easy to find. So, cause right now building this one is about 600 uh, US dollars. Uh, but I think I, it can go down to 500 if I, if I do that uh, correctly, um, to allow more people to have it. Cause even if Lego, does a Razor Crest at some point. I really don't think it would be a UCS one that big. It's over 4,000 4, pieces, so that's pretty big. So for the moving parts of it, uh, I'm not going to, to, to show the different modules right now, uh, but there are some little things that can be uh, opened, like for instance, the doors on the side, and you even have the little uh, safety handles on the, on the side of the door, like that. And of course, the one at the rear, that opens too. Um, and these little panels here, you can see open in episode five. Uh, in my physical build, they are placed like that, but on the digital one, uh, it's, a little bit more, it's a little bit more accurate, as in the show. Uh, they open, it's these ones that, that open instead of these ones. Little detail, but I'm really into the, that kind of detail. I was still trying to figure out how I would uh, do that, that canopy and that, that cockpit and, and the, these round angles like that. Um, I tried different, different versions, but it never really worked. And at some point, I realized that uh, the, the size and the shape that I needed, I had already seen somewhere. And it was in, in this set. And it was this part here. Uh, it was it was the here under my nose, but this one is white, uh, and I needed that 
ideally I wanted it to be black transparent, uh, to be like more in the show, but it does not exist. The only one that was uh, available was the transparent, cl the clear transparent white, uh, but it's pretty rare because it's from a set from the 90s, so that's a pretty vintage uh, part and there's no other way to, to get it, unfortunately. And I'm afraid that um, now on Brooklyn it's getting more and more difficult to get one. So now let's look at how you can uh, dismantle that into the different modules. Uh, there are five main modules for the, the, the body, and then there's the canopy and the tail and the reactors. So let's do that. So the first part that can be removed easily is the canopy, like that. Then you can see all the details. We'll look at that a little bit uh, after uh, all the, the cockpit and, and, and the rest of the inside. Then this opens like that and can be removed as such. So after, what you can do is remove this part of the, of the tail that goes off easily. Then you can remove the, the engines like that. It's all one big chunk like this. Um, so in the instructions, you first build one, then the other, then this part and plug it everything uh, together. For these angles here, I used joint bolts. That's something I usually don't uh, use, uh, I'm not really familiar with it, but for, for these angles it was the only way I found to, to make it work. Um, and for the rear I had a big stock of all these uh, tiles like that with, uh, with hooks and I didn't know really what to do with them and it just hit me that it would be perfect for the, the shape like a, like a cone like that for the, the exhaust. So that's for this one. So now the four remaining ones are the cockpit, module one. So in this one, you have the, the, the main seat. I did a little baby Yoda, the, the closest I could get at that, at that scale. Uh, and then beneath, you have the vac tube and the bed uh, and the landing gear and uh, the front like that. So that's the first, uh, the first one. Then module two. Is a cool one too. That's the module you when you just send me an email, I send you the um, the instructions for 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 this one. So here you have the two seats that can be uh, reclined like that. Uh, these three lamps, if you look at in the show, they are really three lamps at, at the top like that. And then behind you have where he puts his gun and the ladder that goes down here. And then you can't really see that right now, but you can see on my side to see the the photos. There's the um, the armory. So that's module two and then module three has the side doors like that and there's maybe a room here I don't know it's not in the show and the last one is the biggest uh, in this one you have all the carbonite uh, coffins let's call them uh, the other ladder, the one that drives me crazy because I don't know where it goes to, uh, and the, the carbonite um, chamber, the mini carbonite chamber, and the, the, the rear ramp, like that. Eight large, uh, the, I really felt it was the, the, best, uh, the best size for this, even if I can't really put three blurgs in there. Okay, so now let's put it all back together. So module four and three, like that, and then the second one, like that, then the first one, okay, the tail, then this is the maybe the most complicated part to put back on, but it's okay. And then the roof, like that. It's only two little things you snap on and it's fixed. And then you put back the canopy and it's done. Five kilos of happiness. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, having me at Beyond the Brick. I'm a big fan of the show, for, of the channel for, for a long time. 
Uh, this was uh, the was request, the UCS was request by Papaglop. You can find me on social media at uh, Papaglop uh, almost everywhere. Uh, have a good one. Bye.